Hey guys, Dr. Bess coming with another fantastic chemistry video and today we're going to do all about reflux. Very common technique used in organic chemistry. Reflux is used to heat a reaction to the temperature of the solvent you're using, but you're not going to lose the solvent. I'm going to show you how to do it. In today's reaction, we're going to take methyl salicylate, smells like peppermint, and we're going to convert it to salicylic acid, the precursor to aspirin. Epic guys, we're going to learn about reflux, we're going to do a vacuum filtration, we're going to do recrystallization, we're going to do melting point. We're going to do a lot of things today so we don't have any time to waste. So let's get after it. Let's get it done! Alright class, now I'm going to show you how to set up a reflux. It's very simple. What you need is a variac or a variable AC adapter. This is called a heating mantle. This white thing right here has a long extension cord that plugs into the variac. This gray thing here is a laboratory jack. If I turn this little handle here, the jack will raise and lower it so I can raise and lower the heat source uh, to my reflux setup. This of course is a lab stand or a ring stand. I have a water jacketed condenser and I have a small round bottom. This is a 25 milliliter round bottom flask and I have a uh, utility clamp or a three prong clamp. So to start this, I'm just going to put the three prong clamp on here. And I'm going to put my round bottom flask here. Okay? The reactants are going to go into the round bottom flask. On top of the round bottom flask goes the condenser. Now what's going to happen is I'm going to run cool water through this condenser and, and that's going to cool down any vapor that comes from here. As the reaction is going forward, this this round bottom, known as the pot, will be heated so that the liquid inside of here is boiling. The vapor from that liquid will go into the water-cooled condenser, cool down, condense, and then drip back down into the flask. That's a reflux. Gas goes up, liquid comes down. Gas goes up, liquid comes down. Okay. Now the reason why you'd want to do a reaction at reflux is so that you can have the reaction at the temperature of the boiling solvent without losing any solvent. And in today's reaction, the solvent will be water. Now how do we get water, or sorry, how do we get the condenser to be cool? Well, we're gonna to have to run cool tap water to it using tubing. And here's how you put the tubing on. Notice, or you, you may not be able to see on the video, but these little uh, nipples right here are barbed, and they're designed to hold on these kind of tubings, these uh, latex tubings. So let's just go ahead and put it on there. This gotta, it takes a little effort, but you can, just, you can get them on there pretty easily. There's one on the bottom nipple, and here's one on the top one. There we go. All right, now, I've got my tubing attached to my condenser. What I'm gonna do is an off camera, I don't, it's not close enough for me to attach it right now, I have to move it. But this tube, the bottom tube, is going to go to a water source. The top tube is going to go to the sink to drain. All right, so water is going to flow in this way, fill the condenser with cool tap water, and then flow back out. And that will keep the environment inside the condenser nice and cool, so any vapor that comes up into here will lose its energy, condense to the side of the condenser, and then drip back down to the reaction. All right, now, heating. Here I have my heating mantle. That goes underneath the flask. Here I have my Variac stands for variable AC. If you want to think about this, you can think about it kind of like your stove top at home, how you have the little dials that you can go from zero to 10 or from low, medium to high, however, you, however your oven or your stove is set up. Basically, this does the same thing. It delivers a percentage of the alternating current that's coming out of the wall and it heats up this mantle accordingly, just like your stove top will do at home. It's exactly the same concept. The mantle plugs in to the variac, and the variac plugs into the wall. Turn on the on switch, and then I can adjust the AC coming to the mantle using this dial. All right, and this is the basic setup for a reflux system. This is how you'd set it up. Of course, you can use bigger glassware if you have a bigger scale, but in essence, they're all done the same way. Now watch what happens with the, with the uh, lab jet. If I turn it, the mantle goes up and I can put the round bottom inside the mantle. Okay, so now once the mantle is up high enough, now the reaction will be heating and if it gets a little too hot, 
I can just turn the dial and bring the mantle down. I don't have to touch anything with my hands because this stuff's all going to be hot here in a relatively short period of time. Okay? And this is the basic setup for a reflux system in organic chemistry. All right? Now, now that we have the setup done, let's get on with the reaction. Okay, class, now we're going to set up the reaction. I have my methyl salicylate right here. I have my six molar sodium hydroxide right here, very dangerous stuff. Got my safety goggles on, got my gloves on, got my coat on. And I've also got some boiling stone. Now these are just here to help the reaction to be able to boil off of a surface. Uh, the round bottom flask is a very highly polished surface inside. So it's good to give the reaction a rough surface to boil from. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add 260 microliters of methyl salicylate to the round bottom. And then I'm going to add some sodium hydroxide. Now let me grab the book, so I don't remember how much sodium hydroxide I'm supposed to add. Uh, two and a half milliliters of sodium hydroxide and one boiling stone or chip. Now, how did I know how much of this to add? The book says 2.00 millimolar. Well, I calculated it using the data in the book. Now, I'm not going to show you how to do those calculations because it's kind of a general chemistry topic. So make sure you can do that calculation. Make sure you can go from two millimolar to 260 microliters uh, on your own without any help from me. Now, I'm more than willing to help you to do it once you show me you've tried, all right? So, let's, without any further ado, let's get this done. I want to use this uh, repeat pipetter to transfer my methyl salicylate. Take off the condenser, set it to the side. Here's the methyl salicylate. It smells like peppermint, for those of you who may not be familiar with it. Here we go. And there we go. Methyl salicylate is in. Set that to the side. Methyl salicylate is a clear, colorless liquid with a very nice aroma. And now we're going to add two and a half milliliters of sodium hydroxide. Of six bolar sodium hydroxide. This is the real stuff here, guys. This is not a joke. You've got to be very careful with this stuff. A little bit more. There we go. And in it goes. Now, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but immediately upon the addition of the sodium hydroxide, I get a solid formation. And that's okay. That's okay. All right, I'm going to put the condenser back on top. Close up my bottle. Oh, I need a boiling stone. Sorry, I forgot the boiling stone. All you need is one. You don't need to put a handful in there, just one is enough. There we go. Now I'm going to move this over, plug it all together, raise up the heat, and we're going to let it reflux for 30 minutes. All right, so I'll see you guys in 30 minutes. Okay class, so now I've taken the flask off the heat, I've let it cool down for about 20 minutes so that everything's nice and cool. Now I'm going to transfer the liquid from this round bottom flask to this beaker, and then I'm going to add 2.7 milliliters of sulfuric, of 3 molar sulfuric acid to this beaker. So let's do the transfer first. I find it easiest to do the transfer using a pipette. So when there's a, not, you know, small volumes, it's usually just easier just to pipette it over. Larger volumes you would pour, but it's only a few milliliters, so it doesn't take very long to transfer it over. Okay, there we go. Now, yes, I'm going to lose a little bit in this flask, so let's give it a little rinse with our acid. And you might be able to see it, it's starting to form a white precipitate in here, so that's pretty interesting. Let's see what happens when I put it into there. Oh, there you go. A lot of white precipitate now. There we go. Let's pour a little bit more in here, do a little more rinsing. We're gonna lose a little bit in this flask, that's okay. It was really important we could go after it with some cold water, which we might end up doing.
There we go. Now, the other side, let's swirl this a little bit. And let's check the pH. I think we have some pH paper. I'll be right back. Just take the end here and just dip it in. And it's about pH 4, so we need to add a little more acid. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, so now we're going to add a little bit more acid to here. Just going to pour a little bit in. Not too much. You don't want to get too crazy here. Swirl, 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 swirl. And let's tear this off. And let's dip it again. See what we get. There we go. Now we're nice and red. That's, that's definitely going to be pH 1. Uh, maybe two, one or two, somewhere in there, and that's fine. That's perfect, good, perfectly good pH. So now let's get everything out of the way. Bring an ice bath in. I'm going to set this in the ice bath, and we'll find a weight to weight it down here. I'm going to set it in the ice bath for about five to ten minutes. Get it nice and cool. Again, you might want to think about why am I cooling it at this step? What's the advantage to cooling it right now? All right. So we're going to leave it here. We're going to come back in the next segment. We'll do a filtration, recrystallization, and then we'll melt it. All right? See you soon. Okay, class. Now we're going to vacuum filter our reaction. First, we're going to take a little bit of uh, cold water. We're going to put it in the funnel to weight down the filter paper. Turn on the vacuum. There we go. Came right through. And here is our nicely cooled sample. I'm just going to pour it, oh, turn the vacuum on. I'm just going to pour it down through here.
material. All right, guys, now we're going to weigh out the crude salicylic acid. Here's a piece of weighing paper. There we go. Drop that in there. Re zero. And let's just put the crude material on top. And let's scrape that out there. Have that filter paper. There we go. A little bit from the filter paper. All right. Let me put the cover on. There you go. And that is our crude yield or the yield before purification or the mass before purification, if you want to say it that way. All right. So now let's go and recrystallize. See you there. All right, class. Now we're going to do the recrystallization of the salic acid. I put it into a beaker. The hot plate is on. So now I'm just going to add some water to this. I'm going to add about five mils of just plain water. Now we're not going to do a hot filtration here because, you know, quite frankly, we don't have to. I know there's nothing in here that's not soluble because I've done this reaction numerous times. So I'm just going to go ahead and add about five mils of water. And I'm going to let this water heat up. So I kind of know how this crystallization works. It works very nicely, actually. So we're just going to let that warm up now. Now remember, the solvent has to be near or basically boiling before we add more. So we want to dissolve this in the minimum amount of solvent. We want to make a super saturated solution of our product. Now, let me get that a little closer so you can see it a little better. So as you can see, it's starting to dissolve a little bit. As the solvent gets hotter and hotter, the material will dissolve more and more into the flat into the solution okay here we go starting to get hotter and hotter you can see it you can definitely see that the material is dissolving nicely and I keep giving it a swirl so that it doesn't superheat at the bottom and popcorn on me or pop up um, like that that's definitely going to start boiling here, so let me add some more water. So as you can see, the material didn't all dissolve. So we got to do add more solvent. Because remember, we want to make a super saturated solution, so everything has to dissolve. Everybody has to dissolve. And it's coming out of solution. It's uh, starting to boil almost. Let's add some more water. Add a little bit more here. There we go. It's getting there. It's getting there. It's getting there. I may need a little bit more water. So let me get some from off screen here. Add a little bit more solvent to this. There's 10 milliliters. Let me swirl it some more, see if we can get it nice and dissolved. Don't want to add too much water, so I'm thinking if we just swirl this a little bit, it'll be okay. Let's let's just see if we just swirl it, if it'll be okay. I can add more water; it's not a problem. But it's never a good idea to add too much water because then it will come out of solution, and then you'll have even more problems. Oh yeah, it's going. I can see that it's going. It's just taking a little bit of time. And that's okay. That's okay. There we go. That's dissolved. So now I'm just going to put it here off the heat. And I need to get a, a watch glass to cover that. We may be able to already start seeing precipitate forming there. Doesn't take very long for this reaction. All right, so we're just going to let that cool and precipitate, and we'll come back and do a vacuum filtration and then the melting point. All right, guys. All right, class, now we're going to filter our nicely recrystallized 
uh, salicylic acid. So let's get the filter paper ready. It's already inside the funnel. Weigh it down with a little bit of solvent, water in this case. And now let's take our nice needle-like crystals and pour them into the funnel. Grab the policeman to grab the rest of them. Pressing it with a couple of shots of ice cold solvent. There we go. Put that to the side. And there we go. So there is our vacuum filtration is done. Alright guys, we will see you in the uh, way. See you then. All right, class, now we're going to get the final mass of our purified product. So let's put a weighing boat inside of the scale and then re-zero the weighing boat. There we go. And now let's put our purified needle-like crystals in the dish. I've already removed the filter paper, so we don't got to worry about that. And we'll get most of them, best we can. There we go. That's most of them. There we go. Let's put the cover back on. There we go. And there is the final mass of purified product. All right. Now the next step is to do the melting point, which you will see the data displayed on the video here momentarily. All right. So write down the melting points or the melting range, excuse me, and then do up your lab report. And I will see you next time. And with that, I want to wish you all good luck and good chemistry. We'll see you soon.